Hi. Uh, with this lecture, we have reached the end of our introductory course of just statistics. We have seen the basics of just statistics theory and practice, since the exploratory data analysis, Vagram, spatial covariance estimation, Vagram modeling, and the last part of the course with the spatial inference with Kriging. In this topic, we have only covered the most common just statistical inference method, the ordinary Kriging. In the last lecture, we have seen the essential parts of the theory of the ordinary TNC method. Now today, we will finish with this lecture with some essential points of the ordinary Kriging practice. Well, in this last lecture, we are going to see some important issues of the practice of ordinary Kriging estimator. Let us start by this very simple example. We have here three sample values of the variable z at location x1, x2, and x3. And we wish to estimate, to infer the value at this location x0 based on those three values here. Suppose we have uh, isotropic Vagram model, a spherical model with no nugget, with the, this seal and this range. The yellow circle here indicates the Vagram range values regarding the distance of the samples to the point to be estimated. It means that all samples are at the same distance to the point to, and this distance is precisely uh, equal to the, to the range of the Vagram. So this can give rise to this uh, to this Kriging matrix, the matrix K, which is the matrix of the covariances between the samples. So uh, there's no co <coughs> no covariance between the samples. So all of them are far from the the range value, and also the covariance between the sample and the point are zero as well. And <coughs> Because this did uh, give rise to the, S, the to the weight to the weights of those three samples, which are all equal, and this is precisely uh, <coughs> the estimated the resulting estimated value of this uh, at the location x zero, and this is the Kriging variance here. Now let us increase the range of the variogram here the same position regarding the point to be estimated but with the largest range and here we can see you can see the matrix is the only difference the matrix between the of the covariances between the samples are the same but the only difference is the covariances between this, the sample values and the point to be estimated and here we have uh, the weights because the, the distance, the relative distance become the same, remains the same, sorry, uh, the weights are the same. And this is the, the resulting uh, estimator, which is precisely the same as the previous, uh, the previous case example. But the, uh, <coughs> the um, estimation variance is decreased, which means that this is a more confident estimator with lower variance of the error. Now let's see another situation where two samples are clustered here, those two here, and here they are the covariances. So the only, this is a this is the, the difference between the previous example. The covariance between the samples x1 and x2 becomes uh, <coughs> becomes higher. The covariance between the samples and the point to be estimated are new, and <coughs> Of course, this can be reflected, this is reflected, sorry, at the, the weights. The weight of isolated sample becomes higher than the weight, the individual weights of those two clustered samples. As you can see, and this is precisely the, the, the resulting estimate of this point x0 here. <coughs> uh, and the, the resulting Kriging variance. It is, but uh, it it is worth note that the Kriging variance is the highest of the three situations we have seen until now, showing this is the last confident estimate due to this case of clustering. Yeah. 
Now, our last exercise consists on estimating the unknown value exactly at the spatial location. For example, here, the ZX2 is exactly at the spatial location of ZX0. Okay, this is reflected uh, in this covariance, the covariance M, the covariance between the samples and the point to be estimated, which is the maximum possible covariance here at, uh, between ZX2 and ZX0, and is new for the other two cases. Okay, so, uh, and the resulting weights are th those ones. It becomes one for this sample here, sample value here, and zero for the others. So the estimate, the resulting estimate, is exactly the same as the value ZX2, and the Krieg invariance is, is zero. So the estimated value is exactly the value of the sample, and this is called what is this called the exactitude property of Krieging? It uh, honors the, the sample location. Well, the common practice of Krieging in uh, any application field, like mining, geology, soil, water, whatever, usually consists on estimating uh, a regular grid of points covering the sample, all the sample location. Uh, it means that uh, all entire space, such as uh, we transform the, um, the the sample space, the scarce and uh, and and discrete sample space, in a more continuous image of the property that we wish to to estimate. Uh, this can be done. Uh, can, this can be this image here, a two D or three D spatial image or spatial temporal temporal image when the third dimension is the time. So this is the main goal, usually the main goal of a Krieging exercise. Suppose we have now 100 samples here, those, this is the location of the samples, uh, with these statistics. We'll come back later to those statistics. And the vector model is a spherical model. Suppose main direction is 45 degrees, which is this direction here. Uh, with this range, 40 meters, just to compare uh, this distance. A, a, X distance here is 200 meters, so this is one fifth of this direct of this distance in this direction. It is as uh, an isotropic 1.8 anisotropic, anisotropic ratio and the no nugget with one of zero. So the Krieging estimator was applied to the whole area, and this is the result a 2D grid of 200 by 110 regular spaced points of 1 meter. And this is the grid map, where we can easily identify the areas with high and low values here. Okay. Also, we can see the main trends imposed by, su suggested by the direction of the Vagram, which is an isotropic. And this is the Krieging variance here, the resulting Krieging variance. And we can identify the areas with low influence of more low influence of uh, samples with high Krieging variance. And also we can easily see the spatial location of samples with here, those blue spots with the null Krieging variance. Now let us see now the, the statistics of the estimates and compare with the statistic of the samples. Here we, <coughs> this is the statistics of samples and the statistics of, two, of the 22,000 uh, estimated points. Here we have the mean, let's look at the mean. The mean of the samples is 11.9, the mean of uh, the final uh, the estimated points are 12.2, which is, they are quite very, very similar, but remember the Krieging is an unbiased estimator of the mean, and, uh, but here, as there's no evidence cluster, evident clusters of samples, the arithmetic mean, in this case, arithmetic mean of the sample can be considered a confident estimate of the global mean. Now, <coughs> Let's see the variance. 
the variance of the samples, the variance is 35.3, and the, this, the variance of the estimates are 23. It, there's a substantial decrease of the variance. This shows clearly the smoothing effect of Krieging. Krieging is a linear filter built to reach the, an unbiased mean, not to reproduce the variance, which usually is lower than the sampling variance. Another, another result of the smoothing effect of Krieging <laughs> estimator is the shape of the histogram of the Krieg values. The histogram tend to, to, <laughs> to be smooth around the mean and also lose those extreme values, taking this symmetric shape around the mean. Now, the exactitude property of Krieging at sample location, the, sa the sample values, uh, the sam any sample value is the same as the Krieg value. And, uh, and this exactitude pr property is verified and consists on a crucial check of any Krieging exercise. Now you are going to see the effects of the variegram models in the estimate how and what the estimated maps change with the variogram parameters. All this is dependent on our choice about the variogram parameters. Let us do this simple ac academic exercise. Compute uh, <coughs> the estimated maps with the previous variogram model, but changing the range. For example, here, uh, we, uh, we compute, uh, we calculate estimated map with a range of 20 meters, 40 meters, and 60 meters, maintaining the other parameters. As you can see, the largest is the, 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 the range, the more continuous are the resulting high and low, uh, and low values bodies here. Let's see now the effect of the anisotropy. Same anisotropy ratio, but uh, changing the main direction. This is the uh, direction of 45 degrees, this one here. Minus 45, the opposite direction. And considering uh, isotropic, as we can see, maintaining the anisotropy ratio and the higher range of 60, the effects are quite evident when you change the directions of the anisotropy here. Let us change now the negative effect in three situations. 30% of the seal, 60 and 90% of the seal. It is worth, uh, it is worth noting that uh, uh, how Krieging performs uh, as the nugget effect increases. To estimate the point at a spatial location, the effect of the closest samples decrease as the nugget effect increases. In other words, there's no reason to wait more uh, the closest sample values when there's less spatial correlation. That is why the estimated maps tend to be more smooth. Uh, as the nugget increase. Allowing it, uh, if, uh, <coughs> if uh, the nugget effect was equal to the seal, the resulting estimated values are all equal, no matter the allocation, which means that the arithmetic mean is the best estimate once there is no structure. Now we are going to see the effect of the variegram models and the estimates how and what the estimated maps change with the variogram parameters. Here we have the spherical model, exponential model, and Gaussian model. And <coughs> so as you can see, uh, there's a substantial difference between, for example, the, the Gaussian and issues Gaussian regarding the exponential, which is good to, as we have seen in the previous lectures, these are pretty different variogram models. Well, this last exercise were a simple academic exercise. They intend just to illustrate how important and crucial is the choice of the variogram model. 
it is important to come back to the previous lectures and more <coughs> and note sorry that the choice of a Vergram model is much more than a simple regression exercise. The parameters of the Vergram model must be related with physical phenomena and must be considered representative of the entire area, the ensemble locations. And again, this is an important and crucial step of a geostatistical study, as the reality is unknown Normally, a multidisciplinary team of experts in the field of work is involved in order to squeeze all the knowledge about physical phenomena into the Vagram models, into the Vagram permitted models. Well, finally, we have some, some references on this subject, spatial inference, rigging. Uh, we have the, the, the introductory book of Isaac and Sergei Staba, uh, the classical book of Guvers, Just Statistics for Natural Resource Evaluation, and the classical uh, book of Journal and Ishbrecht, Mining Just Statistics. And uh, for <coughs> the, the readers, Portuguese readers, we have this book of uh, Just Statistica para as Ciências da Terra e do Ambiente.